Hey guys, today we're going to dive into the one service that I would recommend offering clients as a beginning bookkeeper. So I made this video right here all about beginner services to offer and I had level one, level two, level three. You can watch that after this video if you'd like. But today we are going to just focus on the level one service. So this is what I consider the most essential and the simplest bookkeeping services that's going to be really great for you for your first couple of clients. So within this level one service, there's three things that you want to offer. And those things are number one, categorizing the client's income and expenses number two, reconciling, and number three, sending reports. So first let's get into categorizing the client's transactions. I'm gonna do some screen records to walk you through these things, and this should provide an overview so you really get a sense of what a bookkeeper does. So all of the money coming either in or out of your client's bank account is going to need to be put in a category. Those categories are found in the chart of accounts. I do have a video all about the chart of accounts you can check out. So anytime your client spends money on rent, it needs to go in the rent category. Anytime they spend money on office supplies, it needs to go in the office supplies category, etc. And those categories are going to help you out in the third step, which is sending those reports. And before we jump into QuickBooks, I just want to let you know my name is Morgan. My website is findpoints.biz and I love helping bookkeepers get organized. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more bookkeeper videos. I also have a free masterclass and checklist you can check out that a lot of people have found helpful. And for this video in particular, I'm going to try to link a few videos in the description box that I think you'll like. I have a bunch of videos that are on like, are you ready to be a bookkeeper? Is learning QuickBooks enough to start your bookkeeping business? What does a bookkeeper do? That kind of stuff. So I'm going to link those for you guys down below. And if you give this video a thumbs up, it really does help me out. So to categorize transactions, we need to go to the banking tab. And if this is the first time you ever are in QuickBooks, then there'll be like a little prompt here that prompts you to hook up your bank account. You can see that the sample company already has a checking, a savings, and a credit card. And I'm going to click on link account just so you can kind of see what that bank setup looks like. So you find your bank within here, maybe you use Bank of America, and then you follow the prompts to log into your bank account or your client's bank account, I should say. And then it will download all of the transactions for you. And just a quick note, you may need your client's help with this depending on your bank access to their account. So the first time you do this, you may need to sit with your client and do it or do it over a Zoom call. And if they can get you a bank login where you have access to do that, like where you make your own password and stuff, that is going to help you in the long run because you won't be as reliant on the clients. And when you're downloading the bank transactions, it'll also ask you for the dates. So how far back do you want transactions imported into this window? And some banks will do a lot of transactions. You know, they'll allow you to do like a year's worth of transactions. Some banks will only let you do about three months. But if it is that shorter one where it's only three months, you can download the transactions in an Excel document or certain types of documents. Let's see um, what it says and upload it into QuickBooks. So you're not going to have to manually be typing in numbers and stuff. Um, so these are the formats that it, it will upload. And like if you have an Excel document, usually you can save it as a CSV or something like that. So you're going to be able to get all the transactions that you want, hopefully, in this bank feeds window. And I do have a couple videos you can check out on cleanups and catch-ups. So if you have a new client and things are kind of messy, or if you're catching up a large chunk of time, that video can help you out. All right, so once you figure out the dates that you want to import and you connect to your bank account, you're gonna be sitting here with a bunch of different transactions. And the main thing you're gonna focus on is this category. So this is the most important thing. This tells QuickBooks where to put your expense in the profit and loss. So right here is the bank detail. So this is like what, the, what it says in your bank, basically. And then sometimes if this is the transaction or I should say if this is a vendor that QuickBook has already learned and you've already created this vendor right here, then it'll know, okay, we're working with Books by Bessie. And then I know that Books by Bessie is always an office supply. So we can start typing office supply, or office expenses it's called in here. And then that is where this um, $55 is going to show up on our profit and loss statement. And so I'll show you really quick how to, if you, if this vendor is not already created, how you do that, you can just type it in. Maybe this is called just bookstore. And then you can say add, and then it'll pop up with this window and you can say save. And then that will 
bookstore is now created as a vendor in our QuickBooks account. All right, then I'm gonna add this and now it is officially in our QuickBooks account. So right now these are just things waiting and they're not actually showing up on the profit and loss, but they're just waiting for your approval. So if we go to the categorize window, you can see, okay, this is official, this is in there, but these are for review. So if you're reviewing these and QuickBooks already has what you want in there, they're correct, then you can um, just click these buttons and you can accept multiple at a time. One question you might have about categorizing is how often do I do this? And it really just depends on the client and how many transactions they have. So if it's a really big client and they have hundreds and hundreds of transactions, I might do it each week just to kind of stay caught up. But smaller clients, I'll probably just do it at the end of the month all in one chunk and do it before I reconcile and then send the reports. And so that brings us to our second step of these beginner bookkeeper services you can offer which is after you categorize everything, you want to reconcile the bank account. So this is a way to make sure everything in QuickBooks is correct. It matches what is actually in the bank account and it kind of like closes out the month for you. So here is a quick overview of how to reconcile. To reconcile, you're going to need the bank statement from your bank. And now QuickBooks is starting to import some bank statements in here when you reconcile. But for this example, I just have a bank statement here open on one side, and then we are still in the banking tab. And from here, what I usually do to reconcile, let me know if you do it differently, is I go, I'll show you that a little slower, I go to the bank register right here, which shows everything that is in QuickBooks that has been approved. And then there's a big reconcile tab right here or a button right here that says reconcile. All right, and so it's giving you a tutorial which you can read if you'd like. And then remember we have multiple bank accounts. So we have that checking savings and then we have a um, credit card also. So right now we're going to do the checking account. And because this is a sample company, this is all not perfect data. It's not all you know, gonna match up, but it is hopefully still gonna show you how to reconcile. All right, so it tells you right here the three things that we need. So first of all, it's the beginning balance, the ending balance, and then the date. So we look on our, um, so we look on our bank statement, and usually right at the top somewhere, there is going to be those things. So right here in this Chase bank account, it has the beginning balance, and then kind of stuff that went on throughout the month and then the ending balance right here. So again, like I said, this isn't gonna match up, but in theory, you wanna make sure that this matches the beginning balance. And then the ending balance, you can copy, if it lets you, and put in here. And then the ending date, you wanna make sure is correct. Otherwise, it could mess up the reconciliation if, you know, transactions are coming through at different times. So this is July 31st, 2018, or 2008, which is very long ago. All right, and for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna use the date of this month because there's not transactions in there from so long ago. All right, and then you have the reconcile screen. So this, these are all of the transactions that are in QuickBooks, and you're going to want to compare that to your bank statement and what the bank thinks you have. And oftentimes QuickBooks is pretty smart, so it is going to check all the ones that it thinks are correct, so all the ones that have happened this month. And then the goal is to make this difference into zero because that means every single thing that is in QuickBooks is also in the bank. So that means it's zeroed out. So for me personally, I do trust QuickBooks a lot of times. If they check them all and then it's zero, I um, finish the reconciliation. Let me know in the comments if you do the same thing or if you go through each transaction. I'm curious what everyone else does. But if you do have a discrepancy, then you need to figure out obviously what's wrong. And so you can unclick all of these, <laughs> unclick them, and then you're going to want to go through each individual transaction. So you can look at your bank statement and see, okay, I have this amount for $17,000. And then you would find that $17,000 in this list and click it. And obviously these are not going to match up perfectly but hopefully you can get the idea. And then you'd find the next one, the 24,000, and then you would click that one. And then you continue until everything is checked off. 
And one tip that helps me out a lot is QuickBooks separates these into these different categories. It has payments and then deposits. So a lot of times your bank statement will organize it in the same way with, um, you know, the outgoing money and then the ingoing money. And then also the checks paid sometimes is helpful. So you can compare this to see where your issue is. So you can see the deposits are this amount. And if that matches the deposits here, then you know that there's not a problem with the deposits. It'll be a problem with the payments with the, you know, the outgoing money. So here are the withdrawals and fees. So compare that. And then checks is also often separate. So checks can provide like issues I've found. So um, that might be a good thing to check out first of all. So look at the checks paid. Then oftentimes they're going to be lower down in the bank statement. So let's see. Yeah, there's a, um, a section just for checks paid. So you could organize these maybe by this reference number, which would have the check number. And then you can start checking off the checks. Okay, I've got this check. I've got this check. The checks look good. My issue must be somewhere else. So let me know in the comments if you have other questions or if you've run into problems in this area. But basically, once you click all of the transactions that exactly match what is in the bank statement, then again, this will say zero. And then you can click up here and you can finish the transaction. You can finish the reconciliation. <laughs> And then that will produce a report. And then also in the bank feeds, in the bank register, all of these transactions will have a little R by them to signify that they have been reconciled, they're checked off, and they are good to go. So one question you might be wondering about is why do you actually need to reconcile if you have bank fees and everything's automatically feeding from the bank? Won't it just be perfect all the time? And I would say yes, that is somewhat true to a point especially in really simple businesses. But once you start getting to the more complex things like the level two and three things that I was talking about, there's just more moving parts and more things can go wrong. You might be entering invoices or checks or things like that. So there always could be a little bit of human error. So either the client makes a mistake. Sometimes I've had the bank check reader read the check wrong. So I had to kind of troubleshoot that and see what was going on. So it's a really good habit to get in now when you're working with simpler businesses and then it should alleviate some of that stress later on. And that brings me to my third step, which is send reports. So if you go into the reporting tab in QuickBooks, there's like a bajillion reports that you can send. So I want you to start out with just sending a profit and loss and a balance sheet to your client. And I actually have a lot of fun playing around with reports and QuickBooks and kind of like making the data as clear as possible to my client. So some clients I like to do like a monthly report that shows like every month for the year. So it's like January, February, March, April, May, and then a total. You can do comparisons to the previous year or you can just pull reports of smaller categories if you want. You can also pull an owner's draw so to see how much they are taking home in their own paycheck. And that's assuming they have the business type where they're taking distributions and not salary. So I'm gonna give you a basic overview and then I want you to go into your reports tab and just play around and have fun with the data and see what kind of story you can tell to your client. For sending reports, we just head to the reports tab. And like I said, there's so, so many different reports you can pull depending on what information you want to give your client. Um, so like if it's anything about contractors or if you want a list of open invoices, sales tax, like there's tons of different things, but we're just gonna focus on the simple things. So right here, the favorites are accounts receivable aging summary. So this is basically any money that's expected to be coming in for the client, like invoices that are yet to be paid. A balance sheet, which shows all of their equity. So it shows their owner's draws. It shows, you know, money they've invested in the company, how much are in their bank accounts, and then a profit and loss. So we'll start with this profit and loss and just click on it. It pulls everything for you. Make sure it's the dates that you want. So this is just showing, you know, the first two months of the year to the current day. So this year to date, you can kind of tweak these if you'd like. And then um, it shows you the report. Um, you can easily email it to your client. So just, you know, follow these things and then email, type in their email there. You can change this information. Um, to say whatever you want and then send it. 
You can also print it or save it as a PDF. Um, you can download it into an Excel document if that is easier than sending them a PDF, which oftentimes might be depending on how they want to use it. You can also save this customization. So maybe you, um, you know, kind of like tweaked some of these things and you wanted to compare it to another period or you did something special to this report that you wanted to save and you want to pull it all the time, then you could save this customization. And so let's see, let's call it the best profit and loss and save that. And then, um, then when you go to the reports, you go to custom reports and you can see we saved this best profit and loss that has exactly the settings that we want every time. And then you can export it from here. And then you can also email it to your client so you can schedule an email. I'm not sure why in the sample company it doesn't give you this option, but I do have some of my clients, like if I want them to have this profit and loss every single month on a certain date, that can be scheduled. So I actually don't have to go in here and pull it as long as all my data is updated. Actually, even if I haven't updated all the data, um, this report will automatically be emailed to my client. So balance sheet is the same thing. You can see, like I said, it has your bank accounts, it has your credit cards in here. Um, it looks like this truck is an asset they have, so it shows assets and liabilities. Let me know if you're interested in a dedicated video just on balance on the balance sheet and you know, kind of the important things about it. But same thing, you can customize as you need to. I was gonna show you really quick. A lot of times I like to show this by month. Um, so if you have this by months, let's see if that's right. Yeah, then you can see like kind of like a mini profit. Let's do last year. So then you'll have all the months. Actually, the date is not in here in the sample company, but basically it's kind of like a little mini profit and loss each month. And you can kind of see how profitable you are each month. So this month they made $300, then they made $112 and then $180. So um, you can kind of compare month to month. So this is a report I personally really like to see. I like to see this in my own business and a lot of my clients as well enjoy um, just comparing months. Let me know in the comments what questions you have about these three steps categorizing, reconciling, and sending reports. Um, you can click right here to get that other video that has the higher levels, the little bit more complicated stuff you can work on. And again, I'd really appreciate that thumbs up and subscribe if you are interested in more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again next week.